and welcome to the Not So Late Show. Tonight, our guest will be Missy Higgins. Hey, stop mindlessly scrolling your life away and tune in to the Not So Late Show on Instagram Live with your host, Brendan Love. Welcome to the Not So Late Show, everybody. I hope you enjoyed that new intro. I've decided to go back to the desk scenario. We had the couch, but I feel like it's, um, yeah, I feel like it's, uh, I owe it to the, to the loyal watchers of the Not So Late Show to bring some level of professionalism back to the show. So we've got the new backdrop, we've got the Clarice t-shirts, it's all happening. Welcome everybody. Hamish Fox, this sounds familiar, yes. Daniel, uh, hello from Hamburg. Hello. What time is it in Hamburg? Uh, as always, yeah, North Warrandyte residents, it's yellow bin night. It's recycling bin, so take that out. Um, uh, let us know what bin night it is for you, what country you're in. A little bit of Teskey news before we get on with the show. Finally, finally. It is out. The Teskey Brothers, live at the forum. There it is, on vinyl. You can get it anywhere. Uh, I don't know, wherever they sell these things these days. All shops have got it. So you can uh, stop asking me when it's coming out. It's out. I uh, hope you're enjoying it. And if you want to be special and support local record shops, uh, which we're a big fan of, this is the special edition vinyl which is only sold in uh independent local record shops so check with your local record shop for your limited edition copy of this sorry that light's getting in your eye there you go yes thank you for ordering it i like your t-shirt so do i it's always good to represent clarice now that we're back on the desk we can't have her on the show all right uh okay that's it for tesky news let's get on with it Thank you, the album is amazing. Well, I'm glad you're enjoying it. It's uh, nice to have it out. Okay, here we go. Well, as always, I like to tell a little story about my guest. Never. Every time. Two minutes ago, I tried this and it worked. Let me tell you a story. All right, so let's just pretend that didn't happen. All right, and I like to tell a little story about my guest. Let me tell you a story. Um... It's cliche to say my guest needs no introduction, uh, but it's kind of true. Uh, This week's guest is Missy Higgins. I'm sure you're all familiar with her music. Um, But in case you're not, a bit of a brief introduction. Missy Higgins is an Australian musician. I would say Australian music icon. I would go as far as to say that, and I think that's very fair. Um, She's released five studio albums, uh, run a whole bunch of arias and... Stuff like that. I usually print out a bio and then read it to try and be a little bit more professional. But um, I think we'll just get to the talking and then, you know, and then we'll, and then we can get a sense of what's going on. So we're just going to add Missy in. Hello. Hello. How are you going? <laughs> this is working. I didn't yeah. think that my request had gone through. Oh, I did. Sorry. I was just, I was just yammering away about, you know, Tesky related news, being selfish. So. Right. Well, thank you for the introduction, even though I don't need one, apparently. <laughs> oh, well, I'm going to be honest with you. Like, normally I, like, write it out on a blue card and everything, and I try and, like, do the whole late-night show thing. Yeah. But um, I just feel like everyone, you know, anyone on our channel is going to know who you are, and anyone in tuning in from your channel is going to know who you are. So, you know. Yeah. Who is tuning in? Brianna. Uh, um, Amor, Amor Loves. Yeah, Leanne, Leanne Mitchell says hi, Missy. Michelle, yep. Lauren Missy, can says, you please sing? <laughs> la, 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 la. Yeah. Give her a there second. Jeez, she's just tuned in. <laughs> God. What am I, a singing monkey? <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'm not a bloody jukebox. Jesus. If you do want to hear me sing, though, t- tune in to the Recharge Festival tonight. Um, At nine. It's, it's on now. It's been going all day on YouTube, just YouTube Recharge Festival, and I'm doing a set at 9 o'clock tonight, a 30-minute set. So you can hear me there. 
Yeah, there you go. Yeah. You've been doing a lot go. of um, isolation sort of little streamy things and performances. How have yeah. you found that experience? Um, I've loved it actually. I mean, half the time I don't have to get out of my pajamas or I can just dress up as well, – I've, I've been dressing up as – anything random from my kid's dress-up box. Um, although this, this latest festival, the, the, this Recharge Festival performance, was a proper gig that I did on a soundstage um, uh, while being very socially isolated from everybody involved. It was kind of strange but awesome. Was that um, with a full band or? No, just my guitarist. Okay. Um, and they actually measured that I was one and a half metres away from him. And they yeah. put they put things between us so that we couldn't even, you know, touch each other if we tried. Um, but yeah, I, I don't know. It's been it's been weird, but kind of pleasantly surprising because I guess at the beginning of all this, nobody knew how they were ever going to be able to reach their audience again, or how they were going to be able to perform, or um, what you know the reality of this situation would look like for a a live entertainer. Um, so it's kind of, well, it's exciting on one hand to be doing it myself just from my living room because I have complete, you know, con control and autonomy over that whole thing. But also it's just exciting seeing people come up with really new creative ways to showcase live music. And um, this latest thing is actually paying the bands um, quite a good fee and paying all the crew and everything. So um, that's actually a like a you know a viable way forward. It's not ideal, but it's um, it's it's definitely a a solution for right now. Yeah, well, it's um, it's really cool that the government's taking those kind of initiatives, I guess. And it's not just the musicians, like you say, it's the lighting people and the engineers and road crew and all of that. So yeah, um, yeah, yeah it's good to see that kind of, I guess finding a place amongst all of this yeah it's it's cool and like I think there are so many industries that have been hit hard um and but I think the one industry that is just probably going to take as long as any other industry to get back on its feet is going to be the live entertainment in industry because people need to be in crowds in in order to watch us like that's the very definition of what we do you know we perform to crowds so um yeah i i there's a lot of people in the business at the moment that are re feeling really unsure about their future so yeah i i guess i'm i am excited to be a part of this kind of new movement going forward of like trying to create an outlet that provides a bit of income for for people in the industry even if it's just enough to kind of get by until things get back on their feet. Yeah. And I th yeah, I think the thing too that um, that's kind of, I mean, there's a lot of people saying like, oh, you know, as soon as these restrictions are lifted, it's going to be all, you know, everyone back into it. And it's kind of, I guess the music industry is a little different in the sense that most things are booked, you know, six months to a year out, depending on the size of venue and festivals and blah, 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 blah. Mm. So it's, yeah. it's, it's really tricky to forecast that and sort of go, well, yeah, you know, like when life gets back to normal, it will be all, all, you know, full, full steam ahead. But there also will be a bit of a weird gap between when, you know, when it's all good again and when you can actually start touring. So. Um, yeah. I think it's going to be pretty gradual. Like I imagine the first thing to come back will be outdoor gigs, but they'll probably be selling a third of the, amount of tickets as you know they would otherwise that kind of thing so they'll 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 just be really spacious gigs at first I think um and then yeah and then gradually get back to normal but I yeah I don't think it's going to be like on Monday everything's you know back to normal yeah. we can start crowding in pubs together um yeah so. well, uh, maybe you could go uh, you know go back to uh Go back to 161 and, uh, you know, where it all started. Oh, uh, yeah. <laughs> 161. Did you ever go there? Are you my no. age? No, you're not. Uh, no, roughly. I'm born in 87, so similar age. Roughly the same thing. Okay. Yeah. What are you, 80, what are you 83, um, 84? 83, yeah. yeah. Um, 
Yeah. So, I mean, I was going there when I was underage too. Uh, that was, I did most of my clubbing before I turned 18. It was really weird. Yeah. I was going to say, so you're actually going there for the club side of things? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Cause I, cause my brother and sister were seven and eight years, or they still are seven and eight years older than me. So they used to, yeah, like sneak me into all these clubs. I used to have a fake ID. I, I used to at some, at one point use my sister's ID and she's eight years older than me. But, you know, bouncers back in the day didn't really care. As if you were a chick and you had high heels on, they really didn't care what age you were. Uh, and do you remember, oh, like... God. It's the plumbing. <laughs> the what? something seriously wrong with our plumbing. Can you hear that? Sounds like there's a creature in the toilet. Oh, my God. Yeah. Oh, they're amazing. Hear... <laughs> um... All right, let's just pretend that's not happening. Yeah, no, that's all good. Um... <laughs> And also, like, I mean, speaking of, like, 161 back in the day, do you remember, like, every time I think of this, it just seems so crazy and it sounds, like, just a little naive. But, like, the thought that when I, like, I used to gig when I was, like, 15, 16, 17 in these clubs and people could smoke inside, like, that just, yeah. thinking about that now just absolutely blows well, my when mind. I, well, when I was, um, when I was, is that loud for you? Can you guys hear it? Can you hear my toilet, everybody? Tell me if you can hear it. It's really it's, loud for me. I kind of like the ambiance that it's bringing, to be honest. <laughs> I don't know. This, this house is falling apart. Um, yeah. I, oh, God, I've forgotten what else. What was, what was the sentence that I just began? Uh, my toilet I interrupted. Smoking, smoking inside. Oh, yeah. So pretty... people, yeah, I remember when people, yeah, were smoking at gigs and, yeah, back then I was doing lots of really small pubs and clubs and people used to sit right in front of me and just smoke, like blow smoke directly up into my face as I was singing. And I was kind of low because I was on the piano. So, yeah. And it was just it was just kind of normal that you would just stink of smoke. The yeah, there was day. no chance that you could wear anything that you came home in. You know, as soon as you no. come home, you have to wash everything and you yeah. wake up with a sore throat. And just like, I don't know how people used to tour back, you know, yeah. like, yeah, well, you just had to be a bit, bit hard. You had to be a bit hardcore. Oh, it's all yeah, softened. Mate, yeah. We all softened up now. This nice Not like the bloody young as these days. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I know. I, I get upset when I have to carry my own things now, you know. How, how times change so quickly. You know? Oh, like, I know, I know. Yeah, don't want to break a nail. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, and if it's not people blowing smoke on you, it's Nana uh, heckling you from the front row of whatever that Brunswick gig was. I heard you talk about uh, it. Yeah, yeah. I was trying to remember what um, it was. It's that, it's that um, pub on Sydney Road in Brunswick. Um, it's really well known. And they uh, have gigs the, uh, was oh. it the the Penny Black? Well, it's called the Penny Black now, but I don't know. What no, it, was it wasn't Penny Black. Cor- no, it wasn't the Cornish Arms, was it? Oh yeah, that was on Sydney Road. Oh, was it? Yeah. Okay, that was it. Yeah. Ah, uh, yeah. That's where we uh, yeah. we started there as well. Oh really? Yeah, right. Yeah. yeah. I have a yeah. I have a uh, I have a real funny story about that, but um it's kind of embarrassing so I won't tell it. Sorry to uh yeah. It involved <laughs> me sending a, an accidental text message to the sound engineer for the corner chance and I didn't mean to. And, uh, oh no. Oh, oh yeah, I hate was... that. I've done that a few times. And have you ever done spe- the- it's especially bad when you when you send the message to the person that you're writing about, which is what you usually do because they're in the front of your mind. So you yeah. send it to them and it's supposed to be to someone else about them. Oh, yeah, have you ever done God. the good, like, uh, have you ever done the one where, like, you're on the date or something and then you message your friend and be like, oh, my God, he's talking about his Dungeons and Dragons collection. <laughs> and then you send it to them. No. Oh, God, I don't know if I've even ever been on a date in yeah. my life. Have you been on a date? I've, never, no. I've always hated the idea. So I've always just ended up in relationships with friends instead. But oh. I'm so glad that I wasn't single in the um, Tinder um, Bumble era because that sounds like a nightmare to me, just having, having drinks and dinner with people you've never met. Oh, my God, um, no. No, thanks. Yeah. I've never been on I can't on do it. small talk. <laughs> <laughs> well, you, you, forgive me, Missy. Forgive me. We can break into, uh, you know, discussion on, uh, I don't know, on Kafka or Sartre if you want. Whatever you want, yeah. I have no idea what you're talking about. Okay. Uh, 
you were saying before about it made me think of something um when you're talking about the size of the gigs and stuff and like people wanting to get in crowds and all of that uh mm. and like when it gets back to that and people's attitudes i was just like i'm the biggest hypocrite because it's like my livelihood and you know my vocation is sort of you know based upon people crowding at mass to see me play but i'm like the most socially awkward like i hate being in crowds so i'm always like I yeah but you don't there. have to be in the crowd if you're playing to the crowd that's the whole idea yeah i know but i always look out there and i'm just like Ugh. Um, oh that's my kids screaming yeah it's chaos it's chaos out there this is a very rare moment of solitude while bar yeah. time is going on What's yeah no i'm the same i mean i think a lot of people weirdly get into performing and and um and yeah the the performing arts when then they're, they're a bit socially awkward or they're they're a bit introverted or shy cuz it's oh, i don't i i've never really been able to fully understand it but it's something to do with um having complete control over the over the situation you know you have complete control over um what you say, what you give out to them, and it's um it's a predictable format, you know. Like you're 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 playing your set, you're talking to them, they clap back, hopefully, um, and it's their job to be quiet. And I think something about that is very much, yeah, it, it's in your control, and it's and it ends when you want it to end. There's so much about normal social interaction that is way too unpredictable and scary and, um, yeah, you know, you never know where a conversation is going to go. You, ne- you never know if that person, what that person's thinking or if they're judging you or um, I don't know, and you never know if you're going to get stuck talking to a boring person in the corner of, you know, of the party and be there for the entire night. There's just so much about normal social interaction that is... Yeah, it's like it's it's like being thrown into the lion's den, as opposed um, to performing. So, <clears throat> without trying to sound flippant about the current situation, uh, I sort of get the vibe that you're similar to me in that it's kind of the sort of ideal scenario. As far as you know, you get to stay home and kind of there's an excuse not to be social. Yeah, I don't. I wouldn't say it's the ideal scenario because we we don't have any help for our kids and so we're we're kind of running a full-time kindergarten here and it's exhausting <laughs> and yeah. crazy um but yeah there's, there's definitely a lot of things that haven't changed for me i mean i was really lucky to get the majority of my touring this year out of the way for from for uh, for summer like i had all my shows pretty much finished just as this was starting. So, yeah, it was incredibly lucky timing. And I'm not really that social. I mean, I have a bunch of girlfriends, and we, but we, we're all fairly introverted and we catch up like maybe every couple of months. And, um, yeah, I think not much has changed apart from, yeah, my son not going to kinder and, you know, not having a nanny to come, come over and help and that kind of thing. So it's been really hard to do any work. But um, there's been some really beautiful things about it too. Like I've really, I've really, um, I guess, well, learnt to stop a bit and be, just try and be present, especially at the beginning of all this. I was, I was really forcing myself to just go, you know what, you can't control any of this. You don't know what's going to happen tomorrow. You don't know what's going to, what the future is going to be like or how long this is going to go for. So all you can do right now is to surrender, especially because, you know, all, all my all my entire calendar had been wiped for the next year. So I was like, well, we're not, yeah, we're not gigging and we're not travelling or, or anything. So we've actually got nothing to look forward to, not in a bad way. We've just got nothing to think about that, that might be happening soon. So we may as well just, yeah, be in the moment. And that's been, that's been a really nice um, thing to be kind of forced to do are you are you getting sick of the the kind of the expectation like are all the people you know sort of like oh i bet you're writing so many songs you know like there's always this uh, pressure of like 
Well, yeah, I mean, I think they hear that until they, uh, until they realise that I've got kids. So it's like, I feel like there's two, <laughs> two kinds of people. There's the people that don't have kids and, and are achieving a shitload of stuff right now. And then there's the people that have kids that are achieving less than they've achieved in their entire lives. <laughs> well, um, I mean, I don't have kids and I'm not achieving. So, okay, yeah, there yeah. you go. Yeah, no, that was an absolute oversimplification. It's so much more complicated than that. But that's in my fantasy. That's what I'm. I'm. I'm just thinking about all the kids, that, the people that don't have kids, and I'm just like, oh, how good would it be? But of course, there's like there's other stresses, and there's you know there's life, and um, people are worried, you know, about how to get an income. That's Luna. She's trying to break in. Somebody's. Um, uh... People keep people keep mentioning something about Luna's makeup. Have I missed something or? Oh, I posted a um, uh, I posted a video of Luna. She she's constantly she's trying to get in right now. Luna, are you nude? Are they nude? They are nude. Okay, I can't <laughs> I can't put them on the video. Um, yeah, she gets in. She gets into my makeup and she just smothers it all on her face she also gets into my undies drawer and puts on all my undies like the other day I can't see. it's like zombies it's like zombies trying to get in it's like starts sh- like pushing my hands away and going no yeah. it's something that it's something about me playing music or singing that um I don't know I guess she knows that all my attention's elsewhere you know like she knows that my um yeah, all my focus is on something other than her. So she gets super angry. It's really yeah. annoying. Um, I'm like, yeah. this is my profession. Actually, yeah, nobody I understands know. that phrase of like when it comes to music, when you're like, this is my job. Yeah, I know. I think it's taken me, what, how, how long have I been doing this? Like, God, 26 years or something. It's been taking me that long to start taking myself seriously. Um, about this whole thing, a song that I wrote. I, I managed to write a song and a snippet of spare time that I got and yeah. I've been producing it up on my computer and it's so fun. It sounds really cool. I've, I emailed it to my drummer and he put some drums in it and I emailed it to my keyboard player and she put some keyboards on and I've been doing it all remotely and it just it's just pretty exciting to, you know, to think that... You can achieve that in isolation. But you can actually collaborate with your your music mates and make some really cool art. Anyway, I did too much touring and I am very happy to have slowed down now and to be doing much less. Um, yeah, just tour once or twice a year and, and kind of maintain my fan base and... Um, I think as long as I keep, my main thing is that if I, if I can keep releasing songs and albums that I'm really proud of and happy with, then that's going to keep me wanting to tour and that's going to keep me wanting to engage with fans because, you, I don't know, you kind of need new material in order to kind of keep it interesting. Calling as well. And so you'd be like, I'm home, but like, you know, you're in this weird limbo yeah. state. Yeah, but it was also like I just kind of got sick of what, every time I got home. Yeah, I had to be. I had to contact people, and then when we caught up, it would just be. It, we'd have to start from like six months ago. So what have you been doing? Like, you know, you don't have that just like that easy banter that you have with friends that you see regularly because they've missed out on so much of what you've been doing that it's almost like you're strangers again, and you have to catch them up on like a very um, significant part of of what you've been doing in your life. So, yeah, there's just there's something really pretty special about having those catch ups on a regular basis where you don't feel the need to make yeah make any kind of small talk catch up stuff. It's like you can just get down to just the nitty gritty of how you are right now. You know. Yeah. Um, like you guys, I've seen you at the last two or three things that we've been doing together. Um. And then, and you do kind of click in straight away with each other because you've been doing the same circuit usually and you've been, you know, it's just, you can just relate to each other on a 
on a level yeah. that no one else can. So that's pretty cool. I really love that. That's my favourite thing about touring festivals. You get to see all your mates that, you know, you, you probably wouldn't catch up with in your regular life. Sorry, yeah. my kids are making too much noise. You're getting a, you're getting a lot of messages saying that your multitasking and parenting skills are inspirational. <laughs> yeah. Anyone that's a parent will um will recognise that this this kind of chaos that you can move very easily through because you're so used to it. This is like this is just the normal background noise to my life. <laughs> yeah. Mm. Um, yeah, I'm having I, three uh, different conversations at once as well. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I always admire Sorry. that because, like, I yeah, I can't do more than one thing at once. So I always admire that. Like, yeah. Well, you're yeah. you're also a man, so you have that going against you. It's true. I am. Well, I'm, I'm also a moron too, so I got that going against. Well, me yeah. Also. God, you've got no hope. I know. <laughs> I struggle to look after my dog, and that's just one feed and a walk a day. So, yeah, yeah. Well, I struggle to look after my dog too. Now that I've got kids, in fact, our dog kind of lives with my mother-in-law now <laughs> because he 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 kind of chose them. He was just like they because we kept going away touring and stuff, and he he started staying with Dan's mum and her partner, and then and then eventually they Gizmo was just like. No, I don't want to come home. And he would just cry whenever they dropped him home to us and just go and, and banish himself out in the garden. So we were just like, I think Gizmo might have to live with you guys now. So he's kind of temporarily. Oh, yeah, Dan's just pointed out that he's he's wearing um, a Missy Higgins T-shirt. Did anyone notice that? Oh, very good, mate. There you go. He's representing. I make him wear. I make him wear my merchandise every day. He's never allowed liked, to wear anything else, especially to bed. I liked his dance moves in your Isolate concert as well. Brief, oh, but yeah, yeah. very good. Yeah, there's a few people that have mentioned dance dancing moves in my Isolate yeah. concert. Borat Weinstein. Oh God! Don't put that image in my head. Special, special. People are enjoying this. There, we're getting lots of nice comments. So. Petition for Dan to open future tours with some contemporary dancing. Yes, I'll sign that. Featuring Dan's da dance moves. Oh, here we go. Here's yeah. a here's a here's a proper question. Well, not proper, yeah. but someone said, "Do you feel like solastalgia is particularly prevalent now?" When the fires were happening, and there was a red. You know, there was a red moon. Over Sydney and and even here, I think for a bit, it made me think of Red, my song Red Moon from that album because, and it's bit like that album is so apocalyptic, like it's all about the end of the world and about um, about climate change and my fear as a parent for bringing kids into a world of um, instability and sometimes I just wish I had a time machine and I could just whenever I wanted I could just choose six years ago and just hang out there for an hour You're <laughs> and, just, and just breathe, have a little cry, <laughs> have some quietness and then come back to the present. Um, yeah, self-nostalgia feels definitely very relevant at the moment. It's weird. It became even more, more relevant after I wrote it. Yeah, it's impossible. It's impossible, but... I've been getting little snippets of time every now and then lately to um, to do a bit of writing, which is it's a, it's been just like it's just been heaven. It's that time that I get dust to myself, and I've never appreciated it more since having kids. It's like it's like reading a book, reading a novel. That's my other favourite thing to do since having kids. Those things that you do that just are nourishing your your creativity and your 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 mind. Um, they just become so special because they're so those moments are so far and few between. So, yeah. What was the um? What was the catalyst that kind of spurred the? Because you said you wrote a song the other day. Was that just literally you had you were like I got some spare time, let's do this, or was it floating around in your head and you were just waiting for the time to to work it out? Or yeah, I um, I was driving in the car actually, and I switched on Triple J, and I heard this song. And I thought, that's a shit song. <laughs> and 
<laughs> but it's a really but it's a really good idea lyrically and I was like I could take that idea and just write a much better song so I did um and of course that that's that's definitely up to the opinion of the listener whether it's actually better but um yeah I I just had the you know I just had the seedling for for an idea and that that's so awesome when that happens because that's the most important thing and then like the rest writes itself. So I just got, got inside and I wrote it really quickly. The hardest thing to do is come up for a really, with a really, really original lyric idea. But once you have that, um, once you have that little spark of idea, then it, it just, um, yeah, it just comes out really easily usually. So, yeah. and we're watching this other show called Mrs. May, Mrs. The Marvelous Mrs. Maisel. On oh Amazon. yeah, I love that. Have you seen that? Yeah, how good's all the costumes and the cars so and the... good. Oh, yeah. God. I love it. I just love... I just can't... I can't quite get my head around how long women must have taken to get ready, though, in those days. Like, she wakes up before her husband wakes up and spends half an hour doing her makeup before getting back into bed so that when her husband wakes up, he doesn't see that she has you know puffy eyes and bed hair um, yeah and then they're just, like... she, they're just they're just so incredibly made up and it's beautiful to look at but i just can't i just can't stop thinking what a pain in the ass we're well, yeah, just all like the uh, uh what are those things the uh the corsets and the Corset. yeah and the huge yeah. frilly thing yeah and getting out of bed and putting on kitten heels First thing in the morning. <laughs> Somebody asked, how do you know a good song? Uh, I don't think you do know, do you? Or do you? Uh, I know when I've written a good song when my manager tells me that's a great song. Because <laughs> I have no idea. But what, yeah. what is, what's a really, I find quite a good measure is if I get, if I get singles when I'm, when I'm playing it. What? I think I might seriously have to go because yeah. this... They need to be in bed in like ten minutes, and that's yeah. not what's going to happen. All right. All right. Well, thank you very much. I'm sorry it hasn't been a, it hasn't been more sophisticated and 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 quiet. No, it's been great. People have been enjoying it. <laughs> right. Thanks for watching, everyone. And um, thanks for being generous and spending your Sunday night with us. See you, Brandon. Thanks. See for you later. Time. Bye, everyone. Thank Bye. you. Well. Wasn't that tremendous? Thank you for watching, everyone. We went uh, we went handheld tonight, so uh, this is a new thing for the Not So Late Show. Hey, Jadiri, I didn't realize you were watching. Have you been watching the whole time? Probably not. I'm on to you, mate. I'm on to you. Uh, yes, uh, gorgeous kids, and Missy is gorgeous. And thank you so much for allowing all of us to tune in to her Sunday night. And yes, everyone, go watch her set on the YouTube festival, nine o'clock. It's going to be great. She'll be singing some songs uh, and you should enjoy it. Uh, all right. Well, now the awkward exit. Yeah, yeah, that's right. Yeah. I got to stare at the thing and you'll get a glimpse of my sad soul underneath. All right. Thanks everyone. Remember yellow bin night, North Warrandyte residence, and we'll see you next week. I, I don't know who's going to be on, but I'll, it'll be, Yes, it is my puppy on my shirt. That is Clarice. Play a song, Brandon. No. Hello from the Netherlands. Yes. Oh, and once again, ugh, while we're here, the album is out. You can get it anywhere from any shop, uh, but it is good to support your local record shop because obviously everyone's feeling the sting during these times, so anything you can do to help out. Uh, independent stores like that is greatly appreciated. All right. Well, that's it for this week. We'll see you next Sunday.